Let me respectfully recognize the Deputy Minister of Transport and Infrastructural Development, the Republic of Zimbabwe, that uh, requested to come and make his address. If you choose, say, you can do it from there, there's a mic. Or if you want to use this one, you can also come inside. Thank you, sir. Honorable um, sir. I'd like to recognize the Minister of Transport, the host minister from South Africa, Minister L.S. Chikunga, um, who is hereby represented by advocate J.F. Mlau, who is the Director General for Transport. Ministers responsible for transport in the SADC region and beyond, here present, represented by permanent secretaries from Mozambique, Botswana, Angola, the President of SARA, and SARA board members present, the chairperson of the different boards of railway companies here present, with special mention to my chairperson from NRZ, Advocate Mike Madiro, CEOs, managing directors, and general managers of the railway entities here present, senior government officials, our stakeholders, suppliers, customers, captains of industry, and leaders of SMEs in the railway sector value chain, the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Allow me to say good morning to you all. Good morning. It is my honor and privilege to share remarks on this auspicious occasion of the SARA Conference and Exhibition Week. This annual event brings together railway operators, suppliers, customers, manufacturers, and all stakeholders under one roof to discuss issues pertaining to the development and growth of the railway sector. This year's conference and exhibition week is running under the theme, enhancing railway capacity and quality of services through new operating models and partnerships for seamless regional integration and trade, which is befitting at a time our railway sector needs to move from just mere existence to the pursuit of being service-oriented. Indeed, I wish to commend SARA for hosting this very important conference, which gives us an opportunity to review the growth, opportunities, new products in the railways industry, and challenges with the view to prefer solutions on the same. Yesterday, we were very inspired with our visit to Gibela and Huawei, where we noticed that Gibela is a testimony that we can do it as Africa. I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the location of my country in the region places the country at the very heart of SADC railway network. Goods to and from the ports in South Africa and Mozambique pass through Zimbabwe on their way to countries to the north and vice versa. Our location propels us to do more to ensure that we facilitate trade and movement of goods in line with the targets envisaged under the SADC's Regional Indicative Development Strategic Plan and the Pan-African Vision within the framework of the African Continental Free Trade Area. It was mentioned here earlier that intra-country trade in Africa is as low as only 15%. And I think we really need to put our minds to seeing how we can push this percentage, this figure up. Our strategic location as the gateway into the region requires us to have an efficient railway network so that goods are speedily transported to their destinations. Allow me to reaffirm the commitment of the Second Republic of Zimbabwe under the able leadership of His Excellency the President, Dr. E. D. Mnangagwa 
who is on an accelerated drive to recapitalize the railway sector in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, our president has a mantra, Nika, Inovakwa, Newe Nevayo, which means our country is for us to build. No one else will come and build our country for us. And also, Zimbabwe is open for business. Zimbabwe is open for business is another very powerful mantra coming from our president, Dr. Ndib Nangama. Ladies and gentlemen, as most of you are aware, Zimbabwe has been under sanctions since the turn of the century. And these have greatly affected the efficacy of our railway system. Like most publicly owned enterprises in Zimbabwe, our railway sector has been struggling to access funds for recapitalization and purchase of critical spares for its locomotives which were manufactured in countries which imposed sanctions on us. Zimbabwe is however grateful to sister republics in the SADC region who have stood with us in the quest to have these